Hey guys, today we're going to do a couple of examples with proving trig identities. So we're going to be using a lot of previous knowledge here. So if you're not sure about your reciprocal identities, your quotient identities, your Pythagorean identities, your sum and difference identities, or your double angle identities, it's a lot there, then you're going to want to go back and check out the videos linked below for the reciprocal and the quotient identities and those other three identities that we just talked about. Number one, I have cosecant squared x minus one over cosecant squared is equal to cosine squared x. Whenever I'm proving trig identities, I'm always going to try and get the more complex side to look like the simple side. So number one, it's pretty obvious that the cosine squared x is way simpler than cosecant squared x minus one over cosecant squared x. So that side, that left-hand side, is the side that I'm going to try and reduce. What I'm going to do first, since I only have one term in this denominator, I can divide that into each term in the numerator. So I'm going to write this as cosecant squared x over cosecant squared x minus 1 over cosecant squared x. And that's still equal to, hopefully, cosine squared x. I know that cosecant squared divided by cosecant squared is 1. And now over here, I know that 1 over sine is cosecant squared. So that means 1 over cosecant squared is actually sine squared. Now here, I'm going to use a trig identity, uh, specifically the Pythagorean identity. So I know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So if I subtract the sine squared over, I have 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. I can use that to sub into this expression. The 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. So cosine squared is equal to cosine squared. Check. I proved what I needed to prove. You do not need to show this pink work. If you know that 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x, you can just jump right to this line. I just wrote this out this time so that you can see kind of what's going on there. I won't write it out every time though. Number two. I have sine to the fourth x minus cos to the fourth x is equal to 2 sine squared x minus 1. The left side looks a little more complex here to me than the right hand side. On the left hand side, I'm noticing that sine to the fourth minus cos to the fourth is actually a difference of two squares. So I can factor that as sine squared x minus cosine squared x times sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And that's still equal to that right side of two sine squared x minus one. Right away, something should be popping out at you, and that something is that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So that really just goes away because I'm multiplying by 1. So all I have left right now is sine squared x minus cosine squared x is equal to 2 sine squared x minus 1. From here, I'm a tiny bit stuck, right? I don't have like a double angle over here that I can simplify. There's not so much that I can do over here. So what I'm going to try and do is get this thing entirely in terms of sine. Because essentially what's in the way here is this cosine squared. right? Over here I have a sine squared. Over here I have a sine squared. I need this cosine squared to be gone somehow. The way that I'm going to do that is by using the same identity that I did over here. So I'm going to replace the cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared based on that Pythagorean identity. And now if I distribute that negative sign, I have minus 1 plus sine squared. And now I have sine squared x plus sine squared x. That's 2 sine squared x minus 1. There we go. That is exactly what I was looking for. And it's perfectly fine to leave your equal signs blank and just show an arrow moving down that you just brought that whole thing down. Number three, I have 1 minus cosecant squared theta over 1 minus cosecant theta is equal to 1 plus sine theta over sine theta. This right side is definitely more simpler than the left. The other hint that I want to simplify the left-hand side is this cosecant squared because that usually tells me that I'm either going to use some kind of identity or that I can factor that numerator. So that's actually what I'm going to do. The numerator is going to become 1 minus cosecant theta times 1 plus cosecant theta by difference of two squares. I bring down the one minus cosecant theta. My one minus cosecant theta is cancel. So now I have one plus cosecant theta. 
I can rewrite that as 1 plus 1 over sine theta using my quotient identity. Now I can see, okay, my left side has two terms, and this right side that I'm looking for is only one thing over sine theta. So I'm going to get these two things to have a common denominator so that I can make them one fraction. So I can rewrite 1 as sine theta over sine theta. I'm going to leave the 1 plus sine theta. And now that I have a common denominator, I can just add those numerators. So my numerator is now sine theta plus 1 over sine theta. And that is definitely equal to 1 plus sine theta over sine theta. Number four, sine of 2 theta secant theta is equal to 2 sine theta. The thing that should be jumping out at you here is the sine of 2 theta. I know that that's a double angle identity. I know that sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. And I know that secant theta is equal to 1 over cosine theta. From here, my cosine theta is cancel. And I'm left with 2 sine theta is equal to 2 sine theta. Ooh, that was an easy one. So here we go. Cosine 2 theta over sine theta plus sine theta is equal to cotan theta over secant theta. On the left side, the thing that's jumping out at me most is this cosine of 2 theta. I'm definitely going to want to substitute something in there. On the right side, I have cotan and secant, so I know I'm going to need to rewrite those as well. So for this one, I'm going to be rewriting both sides of the equation at the same time. When I rewrite cosine of 2 theta, I have three options for rewriting that. Because of these sine thetas that are also on the left side of this equation, I'm going to choose cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. I leave that sine theta in the denominator, and I'm going to copy down the rest of that side. On the right side, I can rewrite cotan as cosine over sine. And I can write secant as 1 over cosine. On the right-hand side, I would only have one fraction. And since eventually I want these two things to look the same, I'm going to want this to be one fraction as well. So on the left side, I can multiply this second term, the sine theta. I can multiply that by sine theta over sine theta. Right? That's just 1. I'm multiplying it by a fancy 1. I'm changing the way that it looks. I'm not changing its value. So now I have 1 minus 2 sine squared over sine plus sine squared over sine. And on the right side, since I have a complex fraction, I can write that as cosine theta over sine theta times cosine theta over 1. So my left side, if I combine that numerator now that I have a common denominator, I have 1 minus 2 sine squared plus sine squared all over sine. And on the right side, I have cosine squared over sine. I'm super close, right? I have one fraction equal to one fraction. My denominator is the same. Something needs to happen with this numerator over here. So if I simplify that numerator, I now have 1 minus sine squared, right? Negative 2 sine squared plus sine squared is just negative 1 sine squared over sine theta. Carry down the rest of that right-hand side. And now the thing that should be jumping out at you on the left-hand side is this numerator. So I know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So if I subtract that sine squared over, I know that 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. So I have cosine squared theta over sine theta is equal to cosine squared over sine theta. Good to go. Number six, cosine a minus b cosine a plus b is equal to cosine squared a minus sine squared b. This one's a little tricky, and I'm actually going to leave this one with you guys to try and figure out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer, with, answer them for you. Good luck. Have a great day. Talk to you guys soon.